Hey everybody, Sean Allison here. Uh, kind of dusted off an old couple old Cozumel videos here. I'm going to redo them with some uh, narration, which I didn't do before, and uh, make them a little bit longer. Uh, so if you're interested in what it's like to dive the Felipe, the uh, mine superette down in Cozumel, uh, this video will kind of give you an idea what it's like to go down there on a group trip and dive this thing. So I was leading this as a dive leader on this trip with a dive shop I was working for at the time. This was back in 2014. You see the whole group here. We, everybody just jumped off the boat. We're descending to the bottom. Uh, some of these people are brand spanking new. We literally uh, certified some of these people on the shore dive right before coming out here to do this. Uh, I'm not sure that some of these people were ready for this dive going through this wreck, but uh, it is what it is. I was just there to assist. So uh, coming down, we got one uh, newer diver here. She's kind of kicking the bottom a little bit, which isn't that big of a deal, but there's a queen conch under her feet. So I'm kind of pulling her back, pointing at the conch, trying to protect the uh, wildlife down there a little bit. This is uh, local guide number one there in the orange sleeves at the bottom there. There's two local guides leading this dive trip. Uh, and then there's the owner of the dive shop I was working for, and then myself, and then a whole bunch of customers. There's like seven of them. And at least four or five of these people literally just got certified this same day. So they're not super efficient in the water, which is okay. They're new. Uh, you got to learn somehow, right? Cozumel's a pretty good place to do it. So the local primary guide here, we'll call him guide number one, local guide number one. He's calling everybody up. He's going to go ahead and we got everybody corralled here. Uh, you just kind of see a tang up there under the uh, vessel there by the, uh, the rudder. So he's calling everybody up. There's a pretty strong current pushing us toward the boat here. This is the stern we're swimming up to. Uh, current's flowing pretty good. You don't have to kick very hard. It's just kind of pushing everybody into the boat. Uh, once everybody kind of gets up into the boat, uh, then they're kind of getting pushed past the hatch here. But uh, everybody's preparation uh, coming up here. I'm not sure exactly where we're going at this point. I just know we're getting everybody onto the wreck. Um kind of corral everybody take a little look around there's not a lot of reef where this uh minesweeper's at the reef's out just a little bit further from this point we're just off the beach here it's closer to the beach than you would think that that it is so coming up all the students are kind of bunching up here uh i believe the local guide went down below see that fish in the distance area just pointed at that's a scrawled file fish kind of some random fish here and there not a lot of really big schools of fish like you expect. I looked away for one second and looked back, and that fish just completely disappeared on me. I don't even know where he went. Pretty good view of how deep it is. I believe depth here is about 62 feet. Uh, time at this depth is about 50 minutes, roughly. So you see the local guide number one, primary guide. He's down there in that hole. He just told the, that diver, come with me. Uh, this takes a little time, so I kind of cut video here to the last diver just went in. I looked up, that was the guide number two up top side, I gave it the okay sign to. So I'm going in, I'm the last diver, the second local guide should be coming in and following behind me. Now inside this wreck you're going to see a lot of these open scuttles, little hatches and stuff like that that have uh, been taken off and they're just open holes. I assume that was for uh, aiding and sinking this thing, allowing it to flood. This is an artificial reef, it was sunk on purpose. Um, this was actually a United States uh, minesweeper. It was built back in 1944, and when it was a U.S. Navy minesweeper, it was called Scuttles, or Scuffles, excuse me, Scuffles. And then in uh, 1962, they sold this thing to the Mexican Navy, who converted it into an Admiral-class gunboat. They use it for rescue missions and uh, drug patrols and things of that nature. Uh, then in 1999, they decommissioned it. They sold it to the uh, park here, and they sunk it as a, as an artificial reef. Now, when they do this stuff, they have to strip all the wiring. You don't see a lot in here. It's mostly just metal walls in the hull because uh, they strip all the wiring, all the oil, all the fuel. All that stuff has to be uh, cleaned up so, this, so it's not an environmental disaster when they sink this stuff. Now, going into a wreck like this, it is an overhead environment. Uh, you see some air trapped in the ceiling there. It looks, always looks pretty cool. It's kind of reflective. 
Uh, but going into an overhead in environment like this, it's not normally for beginner divers. Uh, this is pretty controlled. There's a lot of cutouts. It, it's going to be hard to get lost in here and get silted out. Uh, but at the same time, you can't ascend directly to the surface. Uh, if there's kind of an issue, you can't just take off and go to the surface. Just, you have to find one of those holes and get out of the wreck first. Uh, if the person's not very experienced in the water and they're, they're real nervous, whatever, and they start kind of panicking, that can kind of be an issue. Uh, so normally stuff like this isn't, isn't super great for brand new divers. The great visibility helps. The large particulate helps. You're not, we're not really silting it out in here where it gets dark, uh, so kind of silty that you can't see anything. Uh, so we're kind of all just doing follow the leader here. I think we're down into some of the engine rooms here. You see a lot of the piping. One of the local guides was pointing down there. I'm, I'm trying to find what he was pointing at. I don't see it. There's probably a crab or a lobster or something down there. Uh, kind of coming into an engine room here. You see it gets kind of crowded. We'll kind of bunch up into a room and then we'll kind of move on. Move into a, another room or two, then kind of bunch up. Uh, it, it's hard not to get everybody separated here. It's hard to keep everybody continually moving, but staying close enough together and not getting separated. Uh, this, this is a bit of a chore. This is kind of a bigger group that I would really like to be moving through this wreck like this. Should have been broke kind of into two, two smaller groups. Would have been a little bit easier to manage. But uh, again, I'm not in charge here. I'm just kind of following the local guides. They're kind of running the show. I'm just trying to help corral the people. So we're kind of here waiting our turn. The people at the front are kind of slowly moving off now. Again, I think this is an engine room here. This looks like a bunch of false decking that used to be in piping and whatnot underneath the deck. This would have been down down in the bottom of the ship, most likely. Uh, there are uh, some uh, sh sharp, pointy edges where things have rusted off, stuff like that. you got to be careful when you're swimming around here that you're not getting uh, hung up in, an, in any of the structure. Big school of bait fish. Small bait fish like to hang out inside wrecks like this uh, for protection from larger species. I'm not sure what those fish are exactly. Uh, I, I don't remember. This trip was so long ago. I'm kind of just going back off of memory here, but uh, some, some kind of bait fish. So anyway, coming back up to, uh, I'm at the back of the line here, kind of pushing forward. This is Alexandra Lemon right in front of me here, one of, her, one of the newly certified divers. Kind of following right behind her. I'm her buddy. Just kind of doing some looking around as, a, as we're, going through it's a slow process pushing through here you kind of move a couple of feet and you're waiting you move a couple of feet and you're waiting so kind of stop and look around when you see me kind of stop and it gets a little boring i'm just kind of shining the flashlight around like up there there's a couple little fish up there just kind of browsing around because i this is all dead time anyway again this wreck's called the felipe uh if you just talk about the wreck in cozumel people know you're talking about this wreck again it was a minesweeper it's the Felipe, and the name is spelt uh, in a way that's it's really hard to pronounce if you're not from that area. Uh, best I can do as a white guy is to say Zikotinka, like Zikotinka. Is, is, uh, they'll probably know what you're, understand what you're saying if you pronounce it that way. The Felipe Zikotinka, uh, which is also, I believe, C-53. So anyway, again, we moved into another room here and bunched up. Uh, it took us quite a while to get out of this room, so I kind of skipped over a bunch of that here. Now I'm the last one leaving the room, about to go up the ladder. I see a lobster right down here, just kind of chilling. He's waiting for something to come down uh, that's edible. Kind of cool to see him headed up the ladder here. Uh, we, so we've kind of done one full swim through on the hull, and now we're kind of ascending ascending up a little bit uh, heading uh, to the upper levels so again uh, we're just doing follow the leader here kind of got some feet in my face there just waiting my turn to wait in space enough for me to move on up uh, again I don't know but the first the person in front of me and the person in front of them beyond that I can't see any more of the group again I'm just kind of bringing up the rear Trying to keep everybody moving forward. Uh, it's kind of slow progress here again. I don't really know what's going on on the other end of the line. Uh, but just kind of, 
just kind of slowly moving forward here, getting kicked in the face a little bit. Kind of scanning around. Uh, right up here, there's like some white feathery stuff right, right, kind of right down there on the deck. I believe that's those are hydroids. Uh, if you rub against those, it's kind of like nettle. It'll kind of sting your skin a little bit, kind of itch. Uh, it probably it won't sting for very long, just a few minutes. It'll kind of be itchy and stingy, and it kind of goes away. It's not as bad as like fire coral would be. Uh, there's some barrel sponge, some yellow barrel sponge. Those things are growing all over the place. That's kind of a small one there. Uh, so again, moving along here, you see everything stripped out of this room. Plenty of big openings to just get out of this wreck at any point if you decided to just bail. Uh, you could get out pretty easily through uh, any of these large cutouts. Uh, but again, I don't know my way through this wreck. I'm just kind of relying on following the leader, knowing where we're going here. I haven't really been given any uh, plan. Here, we're going in the front. We're going to be coming out the back and doing this. Uh, there was kind of a little bit of a communication issue topside. A lot of these guys don't speak English super well. Uh, they gave kind of a briefing, uh, but it wasn't a detailed briefing about what we're doing inside this wreck. So, again, I'm just kind of follow the leader here. I'm not really in charge of much other than just kind of keep trying to keep everybody moving, keep everybody together best I can. Uh, but I'm guessing my way through this. So, I come up to Lemon. She gives me the sign... Uh, back and forth with the thumb me saying I don't know which way to go right so I don't know if they went to the right I don't know if they went down in that hatch I'm looking back behind me so my, my natural reaction is hey if we're lost we don't know where the group is exit the wreck go out so I hear some tapping the, the uh, local guide has a little metal stick he taps on his tank with to get people's attention I heard that and I turned around so he's down this hallway so I grab her turn her around say oh never mind okay Here's the guide. Let's go ahead and follow the local guide. So that was that was the first, you know, hey, we're lost. Let's just exit to be safe. Let's exit the wreck. Okay, never mind. Turn around. There's there's the guide. Okay, so we're back on track. We're following the group again. Kind of slowly pushing into this side room here. I, I, I'm not really sure what's going on. And I realize about now this is the bathroom. If you've ever been to Cozumel and you've ever been in this wreck, the one thing you're going to do is go in the bathroom. Everybody wants a picture of themselves sitting on the toilet in this bathroom uh, in their scuba gear. Uh, it's quite a few people that have crammed in this little bathroom. I'm not sure why we got so many people crammed in here. What I'm pointing out on the wall there is a piece of broken metal, like rebar sticking out sharp on the edge. I'm afraid somebody's going to back into that and stab themselves. Uh, so immediately I'm in, but now I want everybody out. So the local guide's going out. I'm pointing everybody else. Gonna, gonna, going to kind of get them back out the door following the guide. I plan to be the last one out here. I'm just going to make sure everybody goes out. And again, I can just bring up the rear here. So I'm trying to get my weaker divers, my newer divers. I don't want to put anybody down here, but you know, kind of newer divers are just not as strong as... Is more experienced divers but I'm trying to get them out the door first uh, again we're limited air supply things like that down here uh, let my my stronger divers leave last there's one of the toilets not much left of this stuff the other toilets are kind of broken and uh, kind of crumbled up there's not much left of them there you can't hardly even sit on them anymore again there's that rebar stick you can see that could actually stab somebody pretty badly I'm surprised they haven't capped that or covered that in some kind of way uh, so we're all going to leave the bathroom now and uh, continue our route through the ship here. All right, so leaving the bathroom here, you know, everybody kind of got the, their chance to go into the restroom, get their pictures on the toilet, whatever. So we're leaving now. You see one of the local guides sitting there just kind of watching everybody exit. He's going to bring up the very rear. That's local guide number two there. He's kind of doing what I'm doing, but, you know, for the whole group, including me. So we're heading out. Now you see it's getting brighter. We're actually exiting the inside of the hall to the outside. Uh, coming out here again, once you get inside, there's no current. Uh, big barrel sponge there. Beautiful sponge there. Um, as soon as you get on the outside of the ship like this, you very quickly remember, oh, yeah, the current is just blasting out here. And Cozumel is known as the uh, drift diving capital of the world. Just about all the diving done here is drift diving, and it's and you're moving at a pretty steady clip. 
and you're normally just kind of riding with the current the boat picks you up at the end and just kind of drifts along with you the whole way until it's time to get back on board now that way you're not fighting the current the whole time you're down there and you can cover more ground so anyway we've come out you see some of the bubbles coming out of some of the holes up there you see uh, Miss Lemon here swimming into the current you can tell that current's kind of blasted toward us here so we come up on that side we're gonna go down back down into this other side of the ship here coming over the top gonna go back down again I'm facing into the current here as soon as I go down and kind of twist around kind of rotate back up vertical again uh, now the currents kind of pushing at my back pushing me toward the uh, wreck here get my light back out it gets a little dark inside the wreck uh, moving in again uh, at this point I'm not sure uh, you know, I, I just assume the rest of the group's ahead of me, and they're just kind of pushing through, and I'm just kind of following along. So I'm doing just doing a lot of checking out here with my flashlight. It's a little office, a little desk there. You can imagine when this ship was active, somebody using this little office space. It's kind of cool to see people see people swimming through these hallways, uh, knowing this used to be a, a, an active uh, ship here. So we haven't gone very far already. We're lost again. We don't know where the group went. I'm not sure um, how we got separated so easy this time. Uh, this is not a local guide there bringing up the rear. That's that's another customer. So I'm asking her which way. She doesn't know. I look at him. He's not sure of anything. So I just tell him both again. Exit the wreck. There's an opening. Go back outside. So there's the back local guide number two. He's telling us go straight down that hallway. So again, we're going from, okay, let's do the safe thing and exit the wreck because we're lost to the backup guide came back again and, and pointed out which direction to go. So we pointed down this hallway. I'm already in the front of the other two uh, divers on this trip with me. So I just take the lead. I'm assuming the local guides are bringing the rear up back behind me. Uh, I'm going to move a little bit faster now. We're getting down into our air supply. Um... We don't want to be caught up inside this wreck if somebody gets a little bit too low on air. So I don't spend a whole lot of time meandering or going too, too slow. I don't blast through here, uh, but I am moving at a steady pace, just continuing to uh, push through the wreck here. As slow as I'm going, uh, it doesn't seem like I'm moving very fast, but I'm going to look back behind me here in a second to uh, see where the rest of the group is. And they're a little further behind me than I was expecting them to be. I thought they were going to be a little bit closer. So there is a line that goes through there. You see it running across the deck there that you can hold on to, kind of follow through. Uh, but it's generally not needed. There's so many cutouts in this wreck. There's light coming in all over the place. You could get out at, you know, 100 points along the way here. But it's a pretty cool wreck. Kind of be able to swim through like this, look down inside the hatches, look down at the lower levels, other rooms. Makes you wonder, uh, you know, what kind of stuff's down there. So coming up to this opening here, getting to the end of the hallway, I'm assuming we're going to go up through the hatch here in a minute. So we get here to the end, I turn around, I'm kind of waiting for them to catch up. Again, they're a little further behind me, I thought, but pointing up. We're, I, what I don't like at this point is that we're separated from the rest of the group. It's just me and these two divers and the second uh, local guide. I'm wondering whether everybody else is. Here they are, I come out. Dive, dive, local dive guide one is telling me this guy is low on air so I check him he's at 750 which is pretty low we're at, we're at about 65 feet um, I know that that the, he's a newer student he does tend to breathe a lot of air so I know we got to get him up pretty soon so I'm telling the local guy two two more people coming out of the hole we're gonna round up and we're all gonna go up and he questions that like he says round up like he he doesn't expect us to to get ready to head up but this guy's already low um i'm trying to figure out what's going on i'm waiting for my last two people to come up out of that hole so i got all my heads here kind of doing head counts on everybody trying to keep track of everybody trying to figure out what the local guy's doing he's looking around he's trying to do his heads count his head counts and he's trying to figure out where everybody's at and what's going on we're checking air at the very least mr hammond here the gentleman he was holding on to uh, and this is mr hammond's wife i check her air what's her air supply because she's his buddy anyway he's low about to go up she's at about 900 so i decide okay you might as well just go up with your husband so go ahead and head over there so the two of them 
are going to basically get put with dive local dive guide number two. He's going to take the two of them and start heading up with these two because they're low. So again, I'm getting his attention. I'm just trying to let him know, hey, you know, she's going also, and they're both kind of low. Now, I'm not sure why he's, he's swimming forward. He's swimming into the current a little bit here. Uh, I'm kind of expecting them to just start heading up. You see there, now he's kind of fighting into the current. They're already kind of low on air. I'm trying to tell them to kind of slow down, calm down a little bit. I really wish the guide would just take them up. So I'm trying to stress to the guide, hey, this guy's low. He really needs to go up. And the, the local guys just kind of keep giving me a an okay, I understand. Uh, but they're swimming these people around a little more than I would like, given how new some of these divers are. So anyway, there's local guide number two. He's on his way up with Mr. and Mrs. Hammond. So they're good to go. I know they're in good hands. Uh, this other person to the left just above me is uh, was a husband and wife team. I can't. I think it was Lawhon was the last name. So that's that's Mr. Lawhon there, I believe. There's Miss Lawhon in pink, and this is Alexandra Lemon next to me. There's a school of horse-eyed jacks in the distance there. I'm pointing out to Alexandra. Not a lot of big schools of fish on the dives down here. It's mostly about the coral and uh, stuff like that. So same for her. I'm going to do an air check for her, see where we're at. Looks like the rest of the group's continuing back into the wreck, which kind of concerns me given that we got people already down below 1,000. So I'm asking her air. She starts to tell me, but she kind of bails on telling me because she starts floating upwards, so she's got to get her buoyancy under control. I turn around. I check this gentleman here. ask him his air. He, he tells me, but I can't tell in the video. I don't remember what it is. But he's kind of floating back there behind the boat. The, the shop owner and somebody else is back there behind the boat. Turn back to her. She tells me 800. I verify 800. She verifies yes, 800. All right, so we're heading back forward. We're following that primary guide. Took my other couple of customers and already went this direction. So we're going to go ahead and follow them forward. Not really sure what's going on at this point. I'm trying to figure it out. I'm wondering why these guys are lingering just sitting back here behind the boat. And I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, I find out later... That a couple of them were just kind of caught in the current and they got out there and they were just struggling to get back to the boat into the current uh, with the, the appropriate action there really would have been is for them to just go ahead and surface and just call the dive instead of sitting there fighting the current all this time uh, again I keep looking back and I'm wondering like look, what's going on with them why is he sitting there just kind of hovering in place you got another one up there but that's the owner of the dive shop up there just above him so I assume he's got control of that customer that diver uh, he's okay. He's got the dive shop owner with him. So I'm going to stick with my multiple divers I got down here that the local god keeps trying to take back into the wreck here. So I come around the front uh, following Lemon here. There's a nice barrel sponge there. Kind of bigger one. Come around the front. Everybody's just kind of regrouping. Uh, I think they're, we're, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do at this point. And we're all just kind of bunched up here. Now, Miss Lawhon here in pink, her husband was the one back there hovering behind the boat. So she now doesn't have a buddy. And I was buddy with Miss Lemon here. I just told her to buddy with Alexandra. Those two, I told them to buddy up together because now they're just two solo divers together in the water. But they, neither of them, for convenience sake, I just had them buddy up uh, so they can kind of stick together here. So I check her air. She's at 850 PSI, which is good. We're about to, we're basically making our ascent at this point. I've decided we're not going back in the wreck. We're kind of done. Um, I'm, I assume we're headed up already, but we get to the bridge wing and the local guide number one, he's going right back into the wreck again, which is now I'm really wondering what the heck's going on. Why are we going back into the wreck? Uh, she's a new student here, so I'm waving her off. I'm telling her no. The guide went in. That guy right in front of me, I'm looking at. So I have to stop her. This is also another newer student. So obviously I'm telling her, no, no, no. no me, you, we're going up. Right? So the, the one that went into the wreck, I was just debating on grabbing his fins and trying to pull him back. But he's a much more experienced diver. He's a personal friend of the dive shop owner. He's following the guy back in. He knows what he's doing. He's not a new student. I don't think I have to babysit him. I'm more worried about these two new students here. So I let him follow the guide back into the wreck. I'm just going to take these two, and I decide, 
okay we're done we're just gonna head on up this this whole dive has kind of gotten out of control i don't know where anybody's at i know two ascended already two are with me one's following the guide back in the boat but there's like seven so there's people missing that I, i'm not sure where they're at this this whole dive has turned into a real uh real mess here and i'm not really in, i'm not really digging it so we get up here uh she's kind of hanging on to the wreck i'm ready for her to let go the current's kind of pulling me away so i'm trying to tell her let's go let's head up uh, because this is drift capital of the world everything's kind of drifting uh, as soon as you let go that current kind of starts taking you away you're going to try to do your st safety stop at about 15 feet it's really hard to do when you, you're not static. You don't have a line to hold on to or a rig to hold on to. You're just floating through the water. Uh, so generally, I would I would suggest you shoot for a depth of between 15 and 20 and try to maintain that zone. As soon as you start getting shallower than 15, if you're between 10 and 15, you're probably going to end up floating to the surface or having customers float to the surface. Uh, it's just you just start becoming too buoyant above 15. Uh, but we're going to start our ascent here. Um, that's really about it. You can kind of get a little bit more of a, a big full shot of the the minesweeper here. It's kind of settled in the mud quite a bit. And I'm heading up with these two customers here. Kind of, We're doing our safety stop now. We're going to drift at about 15 to 20 feet. Do our safety stop. The local guide is, is on the boat. He's about to exit the boat and come over to us. He's going to put a surface marker buoy up and uh, stay at 20 feet so we can all just kind of stay with him. But Thanks for watching the video and uh, we'll see you next time.